goes forward as a nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This conveyance of a sacred trust between our leaders and our people takes place in front of this shining Capitol Dome for a reason. When Abraham Lincoln gave his first <laughs> Raised by ropes of steel. <laughs> he was criticized for spending funds on it during the <laughs> no critics, he replied. It's the sign we intend the union shall go on. And it did and it will. Generations of Americans gave their lives to preserve our republic in this place. Great legislation protects civil rights and economic security and leave the world was debated and crafted under this dome. Now it falls on all of us, not just the two leaders we are inaugurating today, to take up the torch of our democracy, not as a weapon of political arson, but as an instrument for good. We pledge today never to take our democracy for granted as we celebrate its remarkable strength. We celebrate its resilience, its grit. We celebrate the ordinary people doing extraordinary things for our nation. The doctors and nurses on the front line of this pandemic. The officers in the Capitol. A new generation never giving up hope for justice. We celebrate a new president, Joe Biden, who vows to restore the soul of America and cross the river of our divide to a higher plane. And we celebrate our first African-American, first Asian-American, and first woman vice president, Kamala Harris, who stands on the shoulders of so many on this platform, who have forged the way to this day. When she takes the oath of office, little girls and boys across the world will know that anything and everything is possible. And in the end, that is America, our democracy, a country of so much good. And today, on these capital steps and before this glorious field of flags, we rededicate ourselves to its cause. Thank you. It is now my honor to introduce to you the senator who has worked with me and so many others to make this ceremony possible, my friend and the chair of the inaugural committee, Missouri Senator Roy Blunt. Well, I should have known when Senator Klobuchar got involved, at least there'd be a touch of snow up here this morning. Of all the things we've considered, I don't think snow was on my agenda until I walked out the door a moment ago. But thank you, Senator Klobuchar, and thanks to the other members of the Joint Congressional Committee on the inauguration as we officially begin the 59th inaugural ceremony. I also want to thank the Joint Committee staff and our partners, particularly our security partners, for the, they, the way they've dealt with unprecedented circumstances. When I chaired the inauguration four years ago, I shared President Reagan's 1981 description of this event as commonplace and miraculous. Commonplace because we've done it every four years since 1789. Miraculous because we've done it every four years since 1789. Americans have celebrated this moment during war, during depression, and now during pandemic. Once again, all three branches of our government come together as the Constitution envisions. Once again, we renew our commitment to our determined democracy, forging a more perfect union. That theme for this inauguration, our determined democracy, forging a more perfect was announced by the Joint Committee before the election with the belief that the United States can only fulfill its promise 
and set an example for others if we are always looking to be better than we have been. The Constitution established that determined democracy with its first three words, declaring the people as the source of the government. The Articles of Confederation hadn't done that, the Magna Carta hadn't done that. Only the Constitution says the government exists because the people are the source of the reason it exists. They immediately followed those first three words with the words to form a more perfect union. The founders did not say to form a perfect union. They did not claim that in our new country nothing would need to be improved. Fortunately, they understood that all this working to be better would be the hallmark of a great democracy. The freedoms we have today, the nation we have today, is not here just because it happened, uh, and they aren't complete. A great democracy working through the successes and failures of our history, striving to be better than it had been. And we are more than we have been, and we are less than we hope to be. The assault on our capital at this very place just two weeks ago reminds us that a government designed to balance and check itself is both fragile and resilient. During the last year, the pandemic challenged our free and open society and called for extraordinary determination and sacrifice and still challenges us today. Meeting that challenge head on have been and are healthcare workers, scientists, first responders, essential frontline workers, and so many others we depend on in so many ways. Today we come to this moment, people all over the world as we're here are watching and will watch what we do here. Our government comes together the Congress and the courts join the transition of executive responsibility. One political party more pleased today and on every inaugural day than the other. But this is not a moment of division, it's a moment of unification. A new administration begins and brings with it a new beginning. And with that, our great national debate goes forward and a determined democracy will continue to be essential in pursuit of a more perfect union and a better future for all well, Americans. What a privilege for me to join Because they keep today. using the equipment Thank on me. It's nothing there. Look, you try to sit properly and sit properly. It's done believe me. It's done believe me. Your neck is going to be continued. No, leave me alone. Try and sit back. Okay, don't sleep this way. Sleep this way. Like that. Then they shot me. They're not going to. You know why you give it shot? You're doing again the same thing you I'm not doing you. anything. Okay, now you're lying. Understand? Leave the light on. Then off one, off one. I can't. It's too late. Why? Because they talk to me. I told you to put the kids that was in. That will be more better than these sausages. That's why you're spinning these things. Gracious and merciful God.